say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh my gosh, it's going to be an awesome year. Last year, uh, as we dealt with a lot of different things we've talked about at the last meeting, one thing's for sure is I think that we have a good team in place and we're, we're uh, moving into 2021 with lots of momentum. So let's get started today. Thank you and welcome everybody here tonight to the Tuesday, January 5th, uh, 2020 Madison City Council meeting. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Correction. Yeah. Put my glasses on. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Um, we'll start with uh, standing and uh, removing our hats and reciting the Lord's Prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and getting business. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Thank you, Council. 
And uh, before we get into the mayor's comments, I mean, again, it's a pretty light agenda, but again, I want to thank everybody for being here at our first meeting for 2021. This is the one of my favorite parts of our of our meetings, which I consider um, our town hall portion of our city council meeting, which happens twice a month. So if there's anybody here in the public who would like to address the mayor's office and city council, now would be the time to do so, and we welcome you to the podium. Approximately 
you know, three and a half to four million dollars worth of, of community-wide investment just to the redevelopment commission alone. Not to mention the uh, uh, several millions of dollars of investment that we're doing with our road projects and uh, uh, money to our, to our general budget and our CAP funds. On uh, January the 26th, uh, we will have a park board meeting, and at that park board meeting, we'll also be having a public hearing. And the purpose of that public hearing is to review and allow public input on proposed rate changes um, across a couple of our, our park assets, but spe specifically Sunrise Golf Course. Uh, we are we are we've been working hard for about the last five months to provide some recommendations to the park board on uh, how do we eliminate an approximate $300,000 annual deficit at Sunrise Golf Course. We've provided you know, probably about eight to ten recommendations to the park board to consider. So that will be distilled down into a uh, basically rates for season member passes and, and per round of golf, for example, as well as I think campgrounds might be included in that too. So what we're trying to do is eradicate those deficits so that we can actually reinvest back into those park assets. But more importantly, more importantly, is have capital to invest in deferred maintenance across our entire park system. We have playgrounds uh, that have uh, outdated playground equipment, not ADA accessible, deteriorating basketball courts, uh, it's a it's a mixed bag of things across our entire community, and in my opinion, and the reason why this is so important, and I'm asking for the community's support on this, is that we don't uh, we do have a lot of deferred maintenance, and one way to attack that deferred maintenance is to better manage the resources that we do have, and and that is why I think I mentioned in the last meeting, just by making some changes to the revenue and expense profile and better manage Sunrise Golf Course, we can produce a million and a half dollars of additional capital to invest across our entire park system, including Sunrise Golf Course, over the course of the next five years. We can do that without raising a penny of taxes. So the comparable here is one dollar profit at Sunrise Golf Course, just one dollar, uh, will produce um, a million and a half dollars of additional taxes over the course of the next five years to invest without a penny of increase in property taxes. That's what's at stake here. I hope the community is is um, um, going to support this because we really do need to uh, improve the way we're managing some of these, these park assets. So we have, we'll have a public hearing on the 26th and there's still some work to do to get there, but uh, Council, if any of you all receive questions on what's going on across the Parks Department, you know, feel free to refer them to the Mayor's Office uh, and Matt Wooler, who is our Parks Director. We can follow up with them on any specific requests, but we have been embarking on about a five-month, you know, uh, community discussion to really prepare people for why this is necessary and what the implications are. And there's some good that's come out of this, which is we know that, that uh, outdoor recreation is something we want to uh, support. And we know that golf is a youth sport that we want to continue to encourage. And so not all not all of those classes of individuals are going to see rate increases. In fact, uh, our senior community is going to see quite a benefit, even though the rates are going up slightly. Uh, their per round uh, rate is extremely modest. And then we want to encourage uh, our youth participation in golf so there's no change in the fee structure for, for the youth or how we partner with the the College or local local, uh, uh, local school systems. But again, if, if anybody uh, reaches out to you, uh, feel free to direct them to us or you know, if you've got any questions, we're happy to you know, share with you all of our projections on how we, uh, how, we, how we make the investment that we have more, more impactful across the entire community. I'll stop there and pause. I have one more thing to talk about with regards to uh, some follow-up with NDOT, but I'll stop and see if the council or anybody has any questions just yet. I just wanted just to make a comment regarding the Christmas decorations throughout the city. I've had numerous calls, numerous compliments.
city really love them, especially around the fountain. And I want to say thank you for you and your staff. Thank you. Well, that, uh, you know, that brought a lot of people to our community. Um, the businesses that I spoke with about their holiday season was all really favorable. And, and so, I, you know, what, what I'm most excited about that was the ideas and creativity and energy, you know, that, that came from our uh, community relations director, Hannah, and then shared and executed by our street department and the entire staff and your all support because from a budgeting perspective, you know, we had to find the money to pay for that. But relative to the economic impact on the community, I think that it was a tremendous success. And it also demonstrated that there are other things that we can do to promote a quality of life, quality of place, and tourism in our community that is different than, than the approaches we've taken in the past. And so we want to do more of the things that have worked well and made an impact and less of the things that, you know, uh, frankly, you can't measure very well uh, and uh, just continue to strive to do better across communities. Thank you for that comment. Last comment for me on NDOT. As you know, there are a uh, major partner with regards to the roads across the county and city. And we have four pretty significant county highways that intersect or traverse through the city of Madison and bring people from uh, Kentucky into Indiana, so it's a gateway as well. Uh, we do have issues on some of our roads, uh, particularly speeding and crosswalk safety and uh, still some lingering tra traffic uh, up and down Hanger Rock Hill that's on a state highway. So it always prompts conversations with NDOT on how we can you know, improve uh, traffic safety and crosswalk safety and also control uh, traffic a little bit better. But uh, relative to the east end, as you know, with the new bridge approach, there's a lot more traffic coming in on the far east end now, down by Hillside End, because that's where the new approach is. But when when uh, NDOT resumes construction in the spring, uh, they will be focusing on um, making the crosswalks on the north-south streets that intersect with Main Street east of, of uh, Walnut Street, which is the, the Highway 421 project. They're going to make those more visible, and uh, there's definitely more directional signage that's being placed. Uh, Councilman Tenet, all you, you, I'm sure you received some calls with some traffic, you know, still traversing down uh, Second Street heading west. Um, so there's more directional signing signage going on both all across the community, frankly, hilltop downtown on both ends to deal with our, our truck traffic and directional uh, traffic. So that the trucks know what the what the truck route is of 421 and across 62, and also working hard to to create visibility at our crosswalks. Um, there's a lot of traffic down there now, but there's still a lot of pedestrian activity, and it's very difficult to get across the street unless you walk all the way down to a stoplight. So that's happening, literally all across all across the community. We have you know a lot of things planned that we're working on. As soon as spring spring hits, we'll, we'll be attacking uh, some more paving projects with the second round of community crossing uh, grant proceeds. But uh, right now, everything's kind of idled on the East End Bridge Approach project because of winter. And when when spring hits, they'll come in, do the final uh, milling and paving, and then uh, button up that, that project. And hopefully by then, all the signage and crosswalk improvements will be done. And then we'll also be well along our way with regards to you know the interim work we're going to be doing on Main Street and up to the top of Hill Hill. I'm happy to answer any additional questions or open it back up to council before we before we adjourn. Yep. I just wanted to say the entire East End thanks you for uh, the work you're doing with and uh, trying to get the signage right. It's uh, quieted down. It it it. it we have a good relationship with NDOT, and we, and particularly the Seymour District Office. And uh, I wish we, you know, had more home rule on, frankly, on county highways that traverse through the city limits. But we don't. But we can do what we can do. And Chief Wallace and I, and Chief Chief Staff uh, uh, Mindy McGee, we have already talked about how to improve traffic safety and deploy more resources. And that's what we intend to do because we are expanding the Madison Police Department this year. And public safety.
safety is uh, priority number one, and that includes a lot of different approaches, not just you know fighting crime, but also just improving you know the, the pedestrian and the different mul the multiple modes of transportation that we have across our community now, which makes Madison you know fant fantastic place to live. So there's a, there's a lot going on, and uh, I'm happy that. Uh, you know, we have an engaged community like the East End, and then we have several neighborhood watch uh, groups across the city that really put some fantastic uh, eyes and ears on what's going on in their neighborhoods, and that's what you know Chief Wallace and others need to hear to hear about. Our next meeting is going to be two weeks from tonight, which is the 19th. And Tuesday, January the 19th. Council, thank you for your service again. I look forward to working with you in 2021. I'll turn the floor back over to Council, and if not, we'll, uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you guys, I appreciate it.